Hello everyone and welcome to another video. So in this occasion I would like to talk about the 5 most underrated players in my opinion in Smash 4. And when I mean underrated players, I mean players that either A, they're not as well known and people don't think they're as good as they actually are because you know I play them or I've seen them play or people just don't recognize what they actually done like their results and be uh, players that are actually amazing they're amazing but they haven't had the chance to maybe prove themselves but I think they will once they start traveling more but yeah so when I mean underrated it's pretty much like a very strong player that people are just not aware for whatever reason so with that said let's just get into the list for number five, we have Ido. Now, Ido is the Meta Knight player that is pretty much the most unknown Meta Knight player right now. Like when people think of Meta Knight, think of like Leo or they think of Tyrant, but not many know about Ido. Like Ido has been pretty much dominating NorCal. He's actually ranked number zero in the region. He does extremely well over there. He also used to go to SoCal pretty often, and he's also a very active member in uh, San Diego. So he's actually he actually has a lot of really good wins, and he's actually managed should beat a lot of players and mostly at nationals um you don't see much of him but he actually does take top players to game three very often and he actually does really well in his own region he's one of the better meta Knight players for sure and he was also very strong meta Knight player in brawl he's actually very very unknown he doesn't really use social media so you don't really hear of him much like i as far as i know he doesn't even have twitter so that's why like very few people know about him but if you go to all the tournaments in the west coast you'll definitely see him and if you sleep on him man that is not gonna be a good idea idea for you. Salem from New Jersey is literally the definition of an underdog. This man, this man's first win was Apex 2013. This man literally went from not winning a single local to winning Apex 2013, taken out by a storm with Zero Suit and Brawl. So this man really, really knows how to just come up out of nowhere. At Evo, you know, he almost took me out at Evo. It was game three last hit. So this man is one of the greatest players around that very few people know. He's not one to really create content, so which which is why he's not as known, just like Ido. But the thing about him is that he also doesn't travel as much he you'll probably see him maybe like at evil once a year or maybe genesis but you won't really see him much at all he doesn't even come out to uh the new jersey locals as much because he lives pretty far but whenever salem does play he is a beast he is really strong he's one of the most technical players out there in the game and he does some crazy stuff with bayonetta that people obviously have not seen but he's the type of player you know to just come out of nowhere and just beat really good players uh but you know people just don't know about him as much hopefully he gets to travel more so he can showcase his abilities more i actually really wanted to play him and it was great that we had a chance to play at evo it was, it was a pretty nail-biting set you should watch it if you haven't had the chance to do so from Japan on number three, we have Yusan, which is also U3, and number three in Japanese is said, my mom is taken San, so that's why it's U3 equals Yusan. But basically, he's known as the best duck hunt in Japan, and I've actually played with their best two duck hunts. I played with Raito, he's the best duck hunt on the east side of Japan at Tokyo, and then on Osaka, I played with uh, Yusan whose rank is the, uh, the best duck hunt in the West and also in Japan in general. Now, Jusen has actually a lot of crazy setups. He actually has some amazing setups near the ledge where he'll make sure that the can is going backwards. So he'll hit it facing backwards, so it goes backwards. And then he'll push it off the ledge with a backer and then he'll start bouncing it up so it catches you as you're getting off the ledge and he'll catch you with an upper all the way on top of the stage to kill you very early that's called the yusan setup and every time he gets you with it he looks at you he he, he takes like a little pause he looks at you he does that's the yusan setup and but yes that's what he does you know he's one of the best duck hunt players around there uh in the world actually personally i think he's the best duck hunt i mean i play with every duck hunt player out there um the thing about yusan is that he doesn't go to tournaments as often as you will think there's also not that many tournaments in japan and the competition in japan is also very hard because everyone's used to the matchup of duck hunt uh, but we may see Yusen come out the big house and come out to genesis and i'm pretty sure he's gonna cause some upsets people don't really know the duck hunt matchup here in america as much dandy penguin doesn't go to as many tournaments and mbd kind of rarely plays uh, duck hunt so it's kind of unknown here in the u.s the duck hunt matchup um you also have i'm hip but he secondaries him so it's not nearly as well known but in japan you have right to and and Yusen actually go into tournaments so the matchup is much well more known in japan but like i said if he comes out to the u.s i think we can really 
regularly see some upsets. I think it'll be exciting to see a character that, you know, Isam rank as the worst in the game <laughs> for some random reason, but he thinks this is the worst in the game. So we'll we'll literally like have a chance to see how this character fares off a top level. I think it'll be really exciting. But Yusin is actually really good. I played him a lot while I was in Osaka, and this man is definitely one of the better players I played in 2016. So definitely look out for him. And if you have him in June Genesis pool or or whatever national he goes to, he can come to. Just don't sleep with him and spend that whole week practicing against Dalcon. Otherwise, man, you're gonna drown. <laughs> And in number two, we have Kirihara. Now, Kirihara is extremely, extremely underrated. And it's because he actually, um, this man works a lot. And he also ha does a lot of uh, club activities. I think he's in school still. I think he's pretty young. If I'm not mistaken, he's 17 or something along those lines. So I think it's pretty, he's still in high school, if I'm not mistaken. He does a lot of club activities. And they take it pretty seriously in Japan with these things. So basically, every time that he has uh, the chance to go to a tournament, he either has to do an activity or, or work or, or study. But he's usually pretty busy. That's why he doesn't go to tournaments often but whenever he has time he goes to practice at Niatono's house in, in Tokyo and I play with him a lot and he's he's one of the top 10 hardest players I ever played in Smash 4 he's amazing at fighting pretty much anyone that I saw him play he would just kind of destroy in that house and he was also the player that I struggled the most while in Japan as well and he was just amazing very nice player very very skilled and he just knows Rosalina really well he's amazing with Rosalina off the stage very skilled at edge garden very good at Luma control he also plays way differently than the Buzz and Fallen. Fallen is more tactical, more strategical uh, in the sense of like um, employing more strategy while the buzz is much more defensive about setting up walls while Kirihara is like a little bit of those two things but also more I guess you could say offensive in some ways he's more aggressive in some ways he's also from what I can tell from what I played against him he's amazing at using upper he's very precise with upper and it's very difficult to get back on the ground after you start getting upper by him so it can be very very frustrating to, to fight against him but when he came out to EVO um, it was his first major going out of country and one of his first tournaments like in a while so he, he's like I said he he hasn't been going to Japanese tournaments because he was busy, but he managed to go to EVO and he didn't do as well as I thought he was going to do or maybe some of the Japanese players. But the thing is that he was very nervous and whatnot. But I feel like if you play him well, while he's like not nervous or he plays like when on, on top of his game, I think he's one of the best players in the world. And I think it's really scary. <laughs> he, I was actually really afraid of, to play him at EVO, but hopefully, you know, he, he can, he, he has a performance where he can kind of showcase his skill better. Don't sleep on this guy either. <laughs> And then on the first spot, we have Xenu. Whenever we talk about the Mars, we talk about Ally, we talk about Anti, but we don't really talk about Xenu. Like, I rarely see people talking about Xenu. And Xenu actually has some amazing wins. He was the man who beat Ally at CEO and Mario Dittos. He he took him down. He also took down Kamimushi right before EVO as well. And he's also been a player that's taken me several times to the last hit games tournament. He's also managed to do extremely well in SoCal. And he also got top eight at big house on 2015 so he does have a lot of really good things going on for him but nobody really talks about him i feel like a lot of people sleep on him because they just he's just not as well known for some random reason and what's more interesting is the fact that despite all of his accomplishments he is only has been playing the game for like since the beginning since smash 4 comes out that's when he started playing and i find that very impressive because when i first started playing Zenyu back when smash 4 came out this man was not even able to up be back on stage without killing himself and then a year later after that point in time he got top eight at evo and then a year later he beat ally he became Mushi. like that's really impressive like if you think just about that that's kind of very very motivated for a player for an up and coming player to get that far so quick and i think it's just really impressive for him as a player his story just very makes it really interesting so for whatever reason he's not as known people don't really talk about him but i think of him as the most underrated player because people don't think of him as the top as a top mario player they, they kind of consider him like a level below like uh, like fair, see, fair, several levels below ally and anti and while i'm not saying he's better than ally and anti i am saying that he's somebody that you should definitely think of when thinking about mario at a top level and he has uh, some really good wins and does some really good results as well and he's very good at learning and he also pretty much is always theory crafting mario combos you can check out his youtube channel he actually does a lot of crazy stuff with mario but point is a lot of 
people sleep on him a lot of people underrate him and despite him having so many good results and so many good wins people still kind of just just forget about him he just kind of goes on oh notice for some weird reason but yeah so that's that what that's gonna be my most underrated player on my list he takes the number one spot and that's gonna be the list hopefully you guys enjoyed the list let me know in the comments below who are your uh most underrated players the ones that you think that people don't talk about enough i try my best to kind of select a few players you know that i didn't know obviously there's more underrated players out there uh, i'm not saying these are the only ones i'm just saying these are some some of the five ones that kind of just i just thought about when thinking about the topic so feel free to chip in in the comments below as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys around in another video zero out